problems that involve the concept of a prefix sum are usually somewhat tricky to solve. Because it is such a simple concept, you just keep on adding the numbers. But how you apply this concept and how do you take advantage of it, that is where the magic lies. And this problem itself is very, very special. You are given a 2D matrix and you have to find the prefix sum for a sub matrix. Now, this problem actually requires you to think out of the box. And we are going to visually see how you can represent a prefix matrix, how you can build it, and then ultimately, how can you use it to come up with an efficient solution. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's clear the basics. What do you mean by range sum query? Basically, you will be given a huge array and then you will be given two pointers. You have to tell me, let us say, the sum between these two points. If you just have to find out the sum only once, it is very, very easy. You just start iterating, you start calculating the sum from over here, go up till the end and then you stop. You have found out the sum. But this problem is called range sum query. It means that you will be asked a lot of different queries for a huge array. And you are expected to tell me all of these sums immediately. Now, with a brute force approach, sure, you can iterate all of the array again and again. It will give you the correct answer, but it will not be fast. What I want to desire is, okay, I will ask you immediately, tell me the sum of this array. Then I will ask you, okay, tell me the sum of this range. Then I may ask you, okay, tell me the sum of this range. How do you give all of these answers very quickly? This is where the concept of a prefix sum comes in very, very handy. What is a prefix sum? Basically, you just keep a running total of all of the elements in the array that you have encountered so far. So, for example, for this particular array, I can create my prefix sum array. In this array, I can now add a running total of all of the elements I am seeing so far. So, first of all, I get 2, then I get 5, then I get 10, then a 12, then 7, then 8, and then a 12 again. But how is this helpful? Let us say I ask you, okay, tell me the sum between this particular number and this particular number. So how do you find it out? You have to give me an immediate answer. This is where you can trade the help of a prefix sum. Basically, if you try to think about it, what will be the sum of this particular array elements? If you can find out the total of all of these elements, let us say I have all of these elements and then if I subtract the sum of these elements, what do I get? I will get the sum of these elements, right? So in the yellow, I have the bigger elements and then I want to subtract the sum of these particular elements. So do I have this information available? Yes, I have the sum of all of these elements as 8 and then I have the sum of all of these elements as 5. So if I simply do 8 minus 5, I get 3. According to this, 3 should be the answer. But let us verify it. If I add up all of these numbers, what do I get? 5 minus 5 is 0 and 2 plus 1 is 3. So the sum of this particular range is 3 and it matches with our concoction, right? It means we are using the correct logic. Now, can you use this prefix array to tell me the answer of all of these queries very fast? Yes. Let us say I ask you, okay, tell me the sum of this particular range of array. What will you do? You will simply take up 12 and then subtract 12. So 12 minus 12 is 0. So this particular range will have a sum of 0. And you can see it also 4 plus 1 minus 5. So this prefix array is helping you to find out all of these sums very, very quickly. And this solution works wonderfully. Take a moment and let this concept sink in. Because this is just a one dimensional version. What we're going to do is we are going to extend this problem to two dimensions and then work upon it. Basically, instead of looking at a particular range of array, we will be looking at a particular sub array or a particular matrix out of a very big matrix. So how do we do that? Let us try to understand the problem first. Similar to the one dimensional array, this time you have a two dimensional array. And once again, the ask is the same. You are given this array and you have to tell me all of the different queries that I'm doing. For example, the query in this particular format will be, okay, what is the total sum of elements in this particular sub array? What is the sum of elements in this particular array? Note that it can be either a square or it can be a rectangle. 
someone can even ask you okay what is the sum of this huge sum matrix so if you just have to find it out once yes you can do it in constant time but what about all of these multiple queries how can you make sure that you are answering all of these questions very very fast since we already talked about the prefix sum it is very certain that you will have to use a similar concept over here so instead of a prefix array somehow you will have to build a prefix matrix right so okay i have got my original array and then let us say i build up my prefix matrix also it will be of the same size this is for starters but how do you fill it up where do you even start and what does a prefix matrix mean for example if you just had a row of elements you could just keep on adding all of them right but how do you deal in two dimensions to understand this first of all let me just populate the first row and the first column and this will be relatively simple so i just keep on cumulatively adding all of these numbers and i populate my first row so i get 3 and then a 3 again 3 plus 1 is 4 4 plus 4 is 8 and then 8 plus 2 is 10 i just kept on adding all of these numbers and i got this now i also want to populate the first column so this is also fairly simple since this is just one dimension so i will just add up all of these numbers so first is 3 3 plus 5 is 8 8 plus 1 is 9 9 plus 4 13 and 13 plus 1 is 14 so far so good now comes the tricky part what about this particular element if you think about it what does this element mean this particular element should capture the sum of all of these elements the total sum of all of these elements should appear over here right just take this slow and try to understand now how will you find out this sum you know that you will definitely have this particular element right so you will have 6 plus something now what you want to find the sum of all of these three elements if you look at this particular sum what is this summing up this is summing up all of these two numbers right so let me write down just three over here and then what is this number summing up this number is summing up both of these elements so let me write down this also over here so what all did we get we got the number 6 which i covered over here then i got the number 0 which was covered over here then i got the number 5 which was covered over here but notice we got the number 3 two times that is because it came in when i added these two numbers and it also came in when i added these two numbers that is why you are seeing 3 twice so to get this particular sum i can say that the element in the prefix matrix at i comma j will be equal to the number at matrix i comma j so i have 6 then the top element so i have the top element as 3 then the left element the left element is 8 and minus the top left element so i am subtracting this because this particular sum it will be counted twice so i want to remove it for the first time once i do all of this i say a minus 3 over here so what do i get i get 6 plus 8 and that is 14 now if you notice the sum of all of these elements is 14 this is what your prefix matrix has to capture each of these elements should capture the sum of the sub matrix starting from the top left for example this particular element should capture the sum of all of these elements this particular element should capture the sum of all of these elements this is how you have to build your prefix matrix let us try to fill up one more element for example this particular position what it should represent it should represent the sum of all of these numbers now going by the formula that we derived what will be the answer so first of all i have matrix at i comma j so i have the number 3 then i have the top number top is 4 and then i have the left number left is 14 what do i subtract i subtract the top left number if you add up all of these you get 18 so i can write down 18 over here if you check it out 18 is the sum of all of these elements so this is how we are going to keep on populating our prefix matrix this is how you will keep on going and notice that each element is corresponding to the prefix sum of the sub matrix 
Let us try to do one more position for fun. For this particular element, what do I want to do? First of all, I will take matrix at i, j. So matrix at i, j is 0. Then I have the top element. The top element is 21. Then I have the left element. The left element is 22. And then I subtract the top left element. The top left element is 17. I get a 26 over here. And if you are able to calculate, the sum of all of these elements is 26. Going by the same idea, just try to populate some of the remaining elements on your own. This will be a good exercise on how you can populate this prefix matrix. We have our prefix matrix ready now. But just like the one dimensional version, we also need to understand how can I even use my prefix matrix. Problems like these are very very essential for huge tech companies. And if you want to focus exactly on the company that you are preparing for, I have a wonderful resource for you. I have all of 3000 deep code questions exactly filtered by company levels and you can grab all of that information using my link in the description below. Now back to the problem. What I have over here is the original input matrix and then the prefix matrix that we just created. Let us assume you are given a query that you have to find out the sum of this particular sub matrix. This will make things very very real. Now. In the case of a one dimensional array, you were fairly easy. You just used the very last element and then subtracted the starting range. Correct? That was the answer. But in case of a matrix, where do you begin? What is the last element and what is the first element? So one thing is very clear. I know that this is my very last element. But if I look at my prefix matrix, what is this value telling me? This value 49 actually tells you the sum of all of these elements, correct? So I can safely say that my answer will be 49 minus something, correct? Because 49 is the sum of all of these elements, right? Now if you think about it, you have almost reached the solution. It is not very hard. What were we doing in the case of one dimensional array? We went up to the last position and then subtracted the starting range. We have reached the last position, right? This is the entire range. And now we want to subtract something. And what are we subtracting? We are subtracting this particular matrix and we are subtracting this particular matrix. So if you try to look at it visually, what do you subtract? I am removing this particular matrix. What is it telling you? Out of 49, I am removing this particular matrix, right? And what is the sum of this matrix? The sum of this matrix can be determined from this particular value, right? So that is 27. So I can write down 27 over here. So we have solved at least one part. Out of this entire thing, we have removed this section. Now, if we are able to remove this section also, we will get our answer, right? So just follow the same approach what we did in the earlier place. Just look at this complete matrix. Forget about the overlap for now. What is the sum of this entire range? So basically, I am looking at this particular matrix. What is the sum of this entire range? The sum of this entire range will be given by this element. That is 22. So I can write down a 22 over here. So out of the total sum 49, I have subtracted this. That is 27. And then I have subtracted this, that is 22. So is this the answer? No, because if you notice, when I had these overlaps, I had this matrix that was counted twice. And what is that matrix? It is this particular matrix that got counted twice. And what is the sum of this particular matrix? It is 14. So since it was removed twice, I need to add it back one time. So what I can say is I will add back this particular value and that is 14. If you now solve this equation, you will get a total of 14 and that is your answer. To verify it, what I can simply do is just add up all of these elements and the total sum is 14 again. So the overall concept remains the same. I took the complete sum up till the very end and then removed the portions that I did not need. But while removing both of them, I had an overlap. So I added back the overlap matrix that got removed twice. If you think about it holistically, what are we doing? To find out the result, 
First of all, we find out the total. So I got all of these elements. And then we removed the top sub matrix. To remove this, I removed the 27. And then I removed the left sub matrix. To remove this, I removed 22. And then what did you do? You add back the top left sub matrix. And this is the top left sub matrix that you add because it got removed twice when I was removing my original sub arrays. So I add back 14 over here. So based upon this concept, I can use this formula to derive my result. Notice we just have one iteration to compute our prefix matrix. You just go over the entire array that is order of m cross n time and to make any queries, they happen in a constant time. I just look at all of these values and I can tell you the answer. If I have to find any other matrix, for example, this, then what will I look at? I will look at 21, I will look at 4, I will look at 3 and I will look at 9. Just by these four values, I know my answer. So based upon all of this, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we have all of our safety checks. If the matrix is null, if I only have a single row or if I have a single column then the range query is not possible. So I simply return. In the next step, I actually start creating my prefix array. I initialize it to be of the same size and then I will want to fill up all of my elements. To fill up all of the elements, I do a m cross n loop. That means I will iterate over each of these elements and I have special handling for the first row and the first column. Otherwise, what I do? I use the formula that we derived prefix at i common j, this particular value, this is how your prefix matrix will be completely filled up. This particular method is only limited up till here. As soon as you're given a matrix, you initialize a constructor and then you fill up your prefix matrix. Your prefix matrix is now ready. It is now time that you start making those queries. And how do the queries come up? For any query, you will be given two values row 1 column 1 and row 2 column 2. So I have a method that takes in these two values as parameters. And once you have these values, you have now identified two corners. Row 1 column 1 is this value and row 2 column 2 is this value. Based upon these two values, I can form a sub matrix, right? And these two values actually give you all of these four corners that we need. For this sub matrix, I will want this value, this value, this value, and then this value. So what do I take? I take up the total value. Then I take up the top value. Then I take up the left value. And then I take up the top left value. I got all of these four values and I will simply return this as my answer. So in a constant time, I am able to make all of these queries. The time complexity of this entire solution remains constant. You just need one iteration of order of m cross n to fill up your prefix array. And that is very, very standard. You don't need to be bothered about it. However, you are using up that order of m cross n extra space to make up your prefix matrix. So always inform about that. And that is how you can make up your solution. I hope the visual representation of the solution really helped you to understand how to approach this problem and how to come up with an efficient solution. This is a very tricky concept. And I totally agree that it cannot come intuitively. But the more you practice problems on prefix sum, more some of these patterns will start to become very, very evident. So while going throughout the video, what problems did you face? And what other problems have you found out on prefix sum, which were actually very, very tricky, but once you master it, they become really simple. Tell me everything in the comment section below, and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Also, now you can schedule a one-to-one -one session with me and we can discuss about almost anything. So, stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.